say so, uh hey going everyone this is simon hobbs here i've been doing drupal for about three days now um my mentor is vladimir um and yeah and i'm i'm in japan no i'm not in japan um i thought uh so yeah suchi was just reaching out and just sort of looking for presenters and i thought that i uh, would put myself under pressure and present something that is like it's pretty rough because so my business at the moment is um like I don't really need my business website to generate business. I just generally get my business through either word of mouth or through recruiters and so on. So I've sort of got this long standing thing with my website where um I'm kind of like I play around with what's new in Drupal on the website and I kind of care more about having it just open source on GitHub than I do uh, about it kind of working. <laughs> properly and having good content so so what i thought i would just do is uh what what we've been doing lately um I, I, my uh, my friend my mate and collaborator in vietnam in hanoi which is uh tan Nguyen, and um we've been kind of working on um turning the just doing things like uh, converting the site to using drupal recipes so that when we we can install it from scratch out of the box similar to the house similar to how starshot works um, which is kind of why we're doing it. So like what's the latest in Starshot and usually with your own stuff, you get to have a play. Um, so the combination of the fact that I want to play with whatever's happening in Drupal, as well as I want to kind of keep things really open source um, is what I'm going to show you today. So I'm just going to show you what's um, in that open source repo at the moment and talk about, and talk about this aspect. And while I'm talking, I'm just trying to remember how to share my screen. There we go. This is a share. I can't do things and talk at the same time. Share desktop one. Share. Okay. So I'm going to jump over here to, uh, so this is continue to allow. Ah, can you see my screen? Okay, my, is my screen being shared? Yes. So this is the free source website. Um, uh, website and I'm not even going to go to the website at the moment because I'm actually just converting it over to use this so I just added Cloudflare to it so what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to actually look at the website itself I'm going to look at it locally I'm going to do stuff like that uh, this is open source you can go and have a look at it I try to keep it as simple as possible and as Drupal latest as possible um, because I when I hope to get back into doing video content as well. And like, I like to use it for video content. I like to just talk about what's going on inside this website. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to open up this list of things. So today I'm going to, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about, okay, I'm going to talk about starting the website locally. So pretty obvious if you're a DDEV or Orlando user, what's going on there. Um, I'm going to talk about the script that I used to build it, to set it up and install it. I'm going to talk about the script that I used to export uh, so the installer, the DDEV scratch thing, that's going to also build everything from recipes. So I'm going to show you what's where that's all coming from. Um, and then I'm going to use the DDEV, the export content command, and I'm going to show you what that does, which is ex like I'm going to change it in Drupal and I'm going to export the export that content back into the recipe, uh, not the recipes, into the default content. Then I'm going to generate a static site and I'm going to push it to S3. And so... In theory, the idea, the the idea of what I'm, I guess is, I guess you'd call it a proof of concept because I'll talk about a few of the other things that I haven't either worked out. I know they're possible, but I haven't worked out how to do them, but things that are not done and things that are half done and stuff like that. So I'll talk through some of the other, the, the practicalities of using it. But if you think about it like this, is that if you have a static site running on S3, that's great. If you're a Drupal developer and you want to build a site in Drupal and you want editors and you want content workflow and you want and you want to do that as well, then you want Drupal. And so in theory, what happens is time is the halfway point between those two things. And then if you want to save money, you don't have any hosting running anywhere at all except for your S3. So the idea is like imagine if you're trying to do the squeakiest wheel, like squeak, like the 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 cheapest, nastiest simple website hosting as possible while also using Drupal. So you spin it up, edit it, da, da, da. Maybe you want to spin it up in a Git pod or something and then save the results back to your repo and then a Git pub actions runs and pushes it. So what you can do today is you can think, well, that's all well and good, Cy, but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't work based on what you showed me because of this problem or this problem or this problem. 
have those questions in mind. So come in at the end and kind of go, look, uh, this would never work for me or this would never work in theory. Your proof of concept is a failure because I've got a use case that would never work. Think about those questions and let's talk about them at the end. All right, so I have code. I just see if I'm in the right spot. Yeah, I'm free source wood. So, um, so yeah, I've got that repo locally, and I do have uh, ddev. If you see me writing D, and I forget to say anything, I have got common shortcuts. So D is ddev, DD is ddev Drupal. So if I forget to write the full command, you know what I'm doing there. But if I do ddev uh, status there, so we've got the local website running. So. I did took so obviously there's a there's a database here, but what I'm saying is I can uh, I can throw all that away and I can start it from scratch. So let's imagine I've done DDF start, and then I'm gonna install Drupal. So let's have a look at the code base. Whoops, where am I? Oh, what have I done? Oh, something's something's like my my UI is fucked up. Okay, all right. So here's. So which script do I want? I just jump in. I'm just going to jump into ddev commands. So I've got a command here. So the first one I'm looking at is, is this ddev scratch. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a site install, uh, a drush inside install, um, minimal. Just trying to make the screen nice and big for everyone. So site install. So I'm installing the minimum uh, version of Drupal. There's also the uh, existing config, which means it's going to pull config out of the config directory. Uh, is my screen still being shared because you've all frozen? Can I hear anyone? We can. We can. Oh. Okay. We're all nodding, but yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I've obviously got too much shit running on because everyone was frozen. Um, so anyway, so you can still hear me. That's good. So I've got this. So I'm going to install minimum. I'm going to use this flag called existing config. So what that just generally does is all the config that's sitting in the config directory is going to get slammed onto the website. And that's what I'm going to run with. Um, so I'm not installing from a profile. I'm not running any scripts or anything like that. And then I'm going to install this free source content module, which pulls in default content config, uh, default content. So let me just show you what that is. So if I go to free source content. Um, so the way that default content module kind of works, and this is in Starshot, this is, I mean, I think this is in core, but, um, you know, I've got the list of all of the, the nodes and entities and stuff like that. And, and just to call one thing out, what it would be really good is if I could just have an option with default content of just installing all of the content that it finds in the, that directory and vice versa, importing and exporting the whole thing. Because for the import, I'm 99% sure I need to have the, the UUIDs for that. Um, and 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 I'll talk about the export in a second. But so it's going to install all this content and all this content pretty much just sits in, uh, let's see if we can get rid of this. All this content pretty much just sits in this folder. Um, I don't know if you've seen this before. It used to be, J it used to, when I was doing this years and years ago, um, it's, um, it used to be JSON, and I think it's better as 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 YAML, um, but it's not always great. Like you know, you get these really long lines of content, and so in theory, that'd be really nice to have that as multi-line YAML. So if someone made a change, uh, multi-line content. So if someone made a change, you could see that in a pull request. Um, but that's basically what it is. Uh, so so if I'm going to run that command, which is a ddev, um, so I just run ddev scratch as the first command. So again, so that's not pulling a database from anywhere. That's the probably the main thing. So yes, obviously there's a database in you know in action here, but I think the best way to describe it in this hypothetical setup is that it's an ephemeral, an ephemeral uh, state, ephemeral state of the application. It doesn't have to exist all the time because everything that it, it has, it's about to have in it, exists in the code base. Um, so just while that's running, let me go into the next thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to log in. I'm going to change some content. So and we'll we'll look at the the results of that. Um, so I'll just wait for that to finish. And I think we've got a lot of stuff open on my MacBook Air, so uh, it's going pretty fast anyway. Um, so you got the login, and let's jump over here and let's log log into that site. All right, so I'm logged in. I'll just jump into some content. This is not the actual content that I had on the the website, but we're 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 still kind of I'm still kind of deciding whether to go live with this as such because I'm just gonna I am gonna have a static website, but I might end up just for the actual 
business website just going with something like Astra or something like that and save myself a lot of pain and not having it unprofessional when it's not working. But like, so there's a bunch of content in here. Let's just pick one of the sample articles or pages that's in here. It should be a, an article, but it's a page. And so I'll edit this, uh, edit this page. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit more content um, to that page. Whoops. I accidentally hit that and save that. So now let's look at the export co export command. So this ddev export command is the next one. Um, so if I go and have a look at what that command does with my super zoomed in screen, and so I've got host export content. Okay, so this is a default content module drush command. Um, so ddev drush and then export the media first and then export the node and export the block content. So with this, with this, it's actually, it, you don't have to have all of the things defined that you want to input, want to export. Um, I, I think the better way to do this, if I was going to do this, is what I haven't seen in the wild is like a way of calculate, because because this will calculate dependencies, right? It'll If you export a node, it's going to calculate all the dependencies of the things that node relies on. For Clean cleanliness. Um, I export the media first, and then the node. You know, like you, you sort of. It's a little bit like if you've done migrations. You know, you know, you do your you do your taxonomy migration first, then you do your node migration first, and you know, in theory, that it should depend on each other and should all run in the right order. But you know, like we we like to keep things visible and 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 simple. Um, but I think. I think one of the the things about this process of trying to import and export if all the content on the site, it'd be great if you just had like a plugin for default content that just simply calculated all the dependencies of the site, which literally was all the content of the site. Um, but what I have found is that for a lot of the use cases of default content tends to be specific things you want to import and export. So they have this concept of using UUIDs and stuff like that. Sure, whatever. Anyway, so... Um, so that's going to run those three commands. And so I will run ddev export content. Um, and that, and so what I should get here is I should get my diff uh, so that I can say, hey, um, all right, I've got new content. I'm going to commit that to the repository. And then, because then I want to be able to shut everything down and I want to know it still exists. Um, this thing with the the images is just simply something you, you it should just use the same images, right? Like it's silly that it's actually exporting new versions of those images and stuff like that. Um, and that's that's something you'd look into and work out how to do. The main thing I wanted to see here is that I've got new content on my uh, on my node YAML. Uh, it does a pretty good job. Like you can change like the URL and stuff like that, like the alias and stuff like that, and it still works pretty well. Um, so it does a pretty good job. And what I've noticed is because it's in Starshot that the last time I did the export, it actually added a bunch of things um, to the export that weren't there before. And so I can see that there's activity going on, on around this default content module, which is which is great, which is a sign to me that this stuff is going to keep kind of maturing and becoming more and more interesting, which was make, makes this POC really interesting because, like, it's a big what if. And it's not a really un tenable what if if that makes sense all right so i've exported that and i can commit that and push that to my repository um, now obviously the next thing is the is is the tome part now pretty much what tome wants to do is and um forgive me if i get this wrong because tan set this up and i was just like you know hey we had a chat about it and it sounds like tome still works and it should be possible to to do it but if i go into my development uh development settings i think it was tome content authoring um just have to remember where it is i might have to go i found it really easy the last time i was looking for it I thought it was under here. Oh, it's there. Are you looking for time static or were you looking for something else? I was looking for my time settings. Was it there? Did yeah, let's go back and I think you've got time static there. Isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Static. I thought I found it really easy last time. I was like, what? Where is it gone? Um, there's not really uh there's not really much config going on here. So we're actually gonna call this uh we're gonna call this in our command. So if I look at the 
think he's got it in as a web command generate static site. So this is pretty much all that's going on here. We have um the main this is the main command and me just having a little bit of a dive into it uh to, says that Tome will pretty much do all of the calculation for all the things it needs to export. Like it'll export a static index.html for node one as well as the alias for node one. And I'll show you that in a second. Um but so most of most of what's happening is happening in here. Remove the old site. Here we go. Uh, and then there's a couple of other things that we're looking at, uh, which I'll talk about in a sec, but he's just got to fault some follow-up commands after everything is generated. Um, so let's, but let's just run that command. So it was like uh, ddev generate static site. So after that is done what i should be able to do is go into let's let it finish so you can see here i don't know if that is actually i've noticed that there's more paths than that than maybe the new paths or something like that but, but yeah i was looking at this the other day and i kind of go i was like where's my alias for that site for that node that i just created it does exist um but anyway um in theory this is a list of everything that's getting generated in practice i haven't looked at it in a lot of depth but you can see it's generating all the css um, and a bunch of any, any, and I, I'm pretty sure it's doing, um, I'm pretty sure it's doing access control on these as well. Um, so if I kind of go in and have a look at the static site folder now, and if I just grep for zombie, for zombies, uh, so there's my new zombie line. So that's, that's, that's put that, and it's put it in an index.html in the alias of that content. So that's the alias that, that is, for that content and then it's put an index.html in there that's great so so the final step is to push that and then i'm just using so in theory you could do this on a github action right so um but i'm just just going to do it manually so. um don't be there i'm gonna be here do that again okay that's pushed up to s3 and then final result is I can look at this URL and and there's my zombie code. So there's my static page. And, you know, and that's just generally working. Like we need to stick, it's just, this is the raw uh, AWS path to that. Uh, and so the net, you know, the next step is to stick that, stick uh, the free source um, domain inside of uh Cloudflare and have a point to this. I mean, there's other ways you could do it, but have a point to this because there's a couple of things that don't work because it's every, because of the way that the the um I think the aliases are. I'm not, I can't remember actually. No, I think anyway. So something that Tam was telling me there was something that doesn't work until it has the domain on front of in front of it. But whatever. Um, but the only other thing I wanted to talk about now is just a couple of things that are like maybe to some people and like no brainers and they've thought about it before other people might not have thought about it before but the first thing would be how does your how does your interactive stuff work your contact form so your contact form it's going to be like a, a mailchimp form right you're going to actually headlessly uh dig, you're going to decouple that from some some service so however you want to click and that's fine by me like i for for, for this website which is going to just be a list of videos and whatever uh, sticking a contact page on there, which is just a, a, um, a MailChimp form, totally fine. Another thing is, and another thing is something like search and this, and we did uh, get this working and, um, but basically this is using a module called, at the moment it's using a module called search API Luna, which what that does is it acts like search API, but instead of having solar, it builds all of the search into JavaScript files in the front end. And so it's completely compatible with um, a static site solution like this. Um, and also I kind of think pretty cool because you can ship your full static site with search files and, and it's really fast and snappy. And it actually supports quite a lot of content as well um, without getting slow. Um, so that's the end to end of that's the thing I just wanted to show you in a really just general way. And um, and I guess I guess there's not really much else to say except what did I miss and what questions do you want to ask? And and do you have any questions about how would you solve X, Y, and Z if you were do, to do this?
So um, yeah, anyone have any questions? I remember, so oh. like I- Sorry, can you just this... start your question again? For some reason, my sound cut out. Can you just do it again? No, I, I'm not asking any question. I'm just saying that I recall, like I provided similar presentation in Meta with the static site generator using the Tom and Drupal. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty much same that I did initially. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I I have definitely found is it's a good alternative if you are just looking for a small site, just to post it anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So aware just to the search and the form. Like, uh, yeah, just a quick thing. Like in regard to search, like Agolia search is a good. Uh, like API provider, if you are using a static site, you can easily implement uh, that Agolia search that will just uh, just use to create a standalone uh, search. Yeah, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even second think about it. this. Is the most underrated module that I've ever discovered. This is absolutely this will put your whole search in static files in your file system. No need for mm -hmm. any question with anything. Super fast in uh like like I it's just a no brainer. Like why would you add an interface to a third party service? Um, not that I'm saying Algolia is is bad or anything like that. I'm just saying that this is a massively underrated module. This module's fantastic. All right. Uh, Any more did questions? You <clears throat> Did, did you try a single content sync? We use default, <coughs> excuse me. We use default uh, content, uh, but it had some hiccups here and there. Uh, recently we found single content sync, which not only allows to like have a preset content for your out of the box stuff, but also allows you to, let's say your client have similar sites, but not too similar. So you can actually export one content, including paragraphs and other stuff, and then import them in um, and media, and then import them into another stuff. So I just pasted the single content sync link into the um, into the chat. So that's something that actually uh, we found work way better uh, as a uh, default content. Although big kudos to previous next and default content uh, for all the work they've done. Yeah, if, am I on the right page for that? Uh, no. Uh, it's uh, it, there, There's a link in the chat. Uh, in the chat. Which I'll find. If, um, I don't know how to use... Um... And the big advantage over the default content is actually content editors can export stuff and import stuff. That's kind of the biggest difference. Yep. Yeah, I kind of found that, like, Default content is one of those things where I probably chose it mainly because of because if it's gonna be getting pushed into core, then you know, like it's like some of the you know that problems will get solved. But I have I did also find that some of like it didn't really think of things in the way of of as an editor, as an end user, what that's like. Um, it sort of felt very, feels very technical, like to have to set it up from a developer point of view. Um, and so what yours and, but, uh, and also like, I don't, I kind of, um, there was a, there's another solution that, um, I think, uh, Alex, um, was using Alex uses a mix of default content and another module in civic theme. Um, but I hadn't heard of this one. So are you saying that uh, you just do, it's just a URL that you can share or what's? No, no, the editor can actually go and export stuff as a, as a ar archive. So it basically mm -hmm. takes your uh, YAMLs of uh, paragraphs and media and other entities, and then you can import it other. I might do a demo when I'm, once I'm home, maybe next month. Uh, if there is of interest to actually show how we implement it for the client and um, yeah, where it actually shines. Sounds pretty, yeah. I mean, that, that sounds pretty good. I, I kind of definitely think, I think this has come a long way. I think like a bit of editorial, I guess. So um, maybe it was like seven or eight years ago, like I did a project with the Department of um, the Justice in Melbourne. So they did, they were doing full 
you know, full Drupal bootstrapping from, from content when the default content module was exporting to JSON files. And, um, you know, and that means that, or like if you were to go to the, the to that website, you know, at any time in the last eight years, it's it's basically, it's not that it's unhackable, it's still Drupal and you can still log in and change stuff, but they, but it's completely like built from, from code. Like if anything goes wrong, they just rebuild it. And, um, you know, and that's a long, you know, it's a long time that those tools have been in play and working. And I don't, I kind of don't feel like we're very far away from decoupling from the need to have databases as like, it's just much easier to have a database. It's much easier to spin up platform SH, but you know, like I'm paying, I'm paying like 50 bucks a month or whatever for this tiny site. And I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like I want to not be coupled. Like I want to not be reliant on that. And I think, I think that the, like, this is an example of what Vladimir has just said. It's like the, the fact that there are these different solutions that are all leveraging the fact that on config and content in Drupal core and all of like the data typing and stuff like that around it is really, uh, really super powerful. And I think there's going to be more and more options like this. And to be honest, whatever you kind of choose, if you've got a goal and, and I'd really love to see, for example, government in Australia being able to take, you know, small sites, small Drupal sites using Drupal and then publishing them statically. There's absolutely no reason there's not really any blockers. It's not like to say that they're an easy. It's all necessarily easy, but there's not really any blockers. And it is. And if you compare that to to running high availability Drupal, and what you need to know and do around that, and the reputational risk around it, and all that other other stuff compared to running static static hosting, um, I think there's massive wins for for the taxpayer. And I mean, I just think there should be more of this and. I think it's great, like Gavin, like you've you've demonstrated this and uh, generated content. Yeah, so generated content is that other module that um that is Civic Themes using and stuff like that. And they both have slightly different use cases and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a fer it's fertile ground. So there's my editorial. All right, I'll stop recording now. <laughs>